So now, what exactly is data science, by the way? To answer that, I would like to give you a small example. Okay, I uh, would give you a small example of a guy called Jonathan uh, Goldman. Now, who is this gentleman? This was a guy uh, who joined LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional network, right? Community network, all, all of you would be aware. In 2006, when he joined, this was, uh, you know, LinkedIn was quite famous, uh, but uh, not so famous around 2006. Uh, people were joining it, people were creating their profiles, they were creating their professional experience and all that stuff. And then there was there was not much of the activity, okay. So, uh, but it was growing at a decent rate. So from several thousands to you know they were having several million accounts and all at that point of time, and uh, they were having the problems of scaling and all. So this guy when he joined, he found their data very abnormal. <laughs> he said uh, there is something wrong with your you know the uh, structure that what exactly you are trying to do is you are getting more and more people on the board they do their some of the uh, you know activities whatever they want to do they search for some people and uh, they add into the uh, network and then after some time there is no activity in that account practically it means they have left linkedin right so he said there's there is something missing in your data now uh, the engineering team, whatever it was, uh, they, they were having at that point of time, nobody said, uh, nobody paid uh, any attention to this guy's uh, suggestions. Uh, but he was, uh, I mean, there at that point of time, their CEO, he gave him a free hand saying that implement whatever ideas you want to implement. Now, the idea which he implemented, nowadays we know it as LinkedIn recommendations. It was only after LinkedIn applied recommendations, okay, actually the traffic started growing. So people, uh, so it, it used to serve various ads. Actually LinkedIn recommendations are the kind of ads which are shown to you, okay. They are, they are the one of the first examples of the targeted ads. So this guy actually applied all of the, you know, he, he had various theories. So he started with their data set. He, uh, he had various theories, okay, correlation, this might be the correlation with so and so people. There is a chance that if A knows B and A knows C, then there is a good chance that B also knows C. I mean, this is a very simplistic kind of thing which I'm telling you. Uh, he had many such theories. And he applied, he was quite, he's quite a good statistician by the way, and of course a good programmer, needless to say about this, right? So he applied all of these things, and then he had, he was reasonably sure that if I put this, it might increase the traffic. They, the moment they had put, and within few months they started seeing increased traffic, increased click streams, increased interactions among the people. That's when LinkedIn actually started flourishing it. So you can you can guess the power. I mean, this is so. What exactly he did? What exactly was the job? This is actually the job of a pure data scientist. Is it about increasing the revenue? Needless to so, uh, needless to say, right? Otherwise, you are into the academic part. But uh, it's about getting the insights of the data. He had some theories. He studied the data. So what did it require? It required many things. Of course, it required uh, the domain expertise. He needed he needed to understand LinkedIn data, right? How exactly it is organized? What exactly does it mean? What exactly would be the significance of a specific data field and so, so and so forth? And of course, he needed a good statistician kind of uh, uh, knack, right? Wherein he has to understand, okay, if I do so and if, what if this, that what if scenario? What if this uh, this happens, then what would be the output, right? So all those kind of, you know, multiple things would be coming. Uh, th those those are the kind of slides which we are, we, we are uh, you know, going to discuss now. But the link which is given here, right, the sexiest jobs of 21st century and all, please, uh, I personally recommend all of you to have a look of it after this uh, presentation. You'll find this case study. So 
this is just I mean rather I, I can keep talking about what is data science for hours and hours and hours about it but it's all about just just one example which we gave and if that would not have been provided I mean I personally I created my account uh, uh, I think uh, 2005 itself but I started um, using it actively only after I think uh, 2007 or 8 not before this so in between my account was dormant kind of thing so this was true with many people with just some of these ideas here and there you know they just revived a full fledged company and I, I don't need to tell you where exactly LinkedIn is today right you talk about hiring you talk about prospective candidates you talk about some recommendations right LinkedIn is the answer, right? So just just giving you a perspective here. So there is not much of the information on these slides, so I would be uh, you know continuing through these slides very fast. Data uh, data science. It's all about you have algorithms. You have the algorithms to deal with the data, but does not matter how perfect algorithm you write. If you have more and more data, the chances are it will have more and more imperfections, more and more kind of scenario which you might not have thought about it, right? Which you might not have thought about. And then, uh, of course, so if you have to beat a good algorithm, but just give it huge amount of data. There are good enough chances that the algorithm may fail. So this is all, I mean, one of the example is recommending the movies or music based on your past preferences. If you try to search on net, you will find a lot of such projects. But the simple thing is, uh, you know, I just need to give you more information. See, I was when some movies also, which I have not just provided you. Now, based on it, if you have written some pre-configured kind of rules and all, you might not be able to still suggest me a good amount of movie. I mean, good type of movie. So still. Data science again. We are we are just continuing the very same thing that you the moment you keep increasing good amount of you know your data, your algorithms start you know behaving in a less perfect manner. So what are the good news and what are the bad news in this? So the good news is you have big data. Now, big data means you can it's not. So what, what exactly the big data was, it's a huge amount of data, but when you talk about big data is here, it's about the tools which can tame big data, the tools which can handle that much amount of volume of the data and process it are there. The bad news is we are still struggling to store and analyzing, analyze it. So still, uh, you know, these tools are still at their, you know, evolving state. So they have some sort of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, you talk about Hadoop, it is very good. You talk about uh, it that uh, what exactly are its capability, uh, capabilities wise, there is no doubt about it. But it has a limitation that it works in a batch way. You cannot really do the online kind of uh, transactions on the top of it. Whereas there might be some, you know, several scenarios where people want real time or almost real time kind of access on this huge amount of data. Then you have to go towards a you go to some other, then it would not have the kind of features which Hadoop provides, right? So, still, uh, there are still pros and cons, and of course, uh, you guys, uh, like you people who are attending this data science uh, course, there are very, very few people still in the world who are e even capable right now, even to, you know, uh, have the prerequisites for it. So, there are so many evolving things which are still happening in this area. So it's a diagram wherein on the top you can actually see various technologies. So technology set one, it's basically ETL specialties, Storm, Scribe, Flume. These are various technologies. Okay, uh, technology stack two, which is about Hadoop. Okay, and then technology stack three, which is R, Hive, Pig, Python, Java, Mahout, what not. And believe me, uh, these are the uh, these are the uh, stacks which are very very popular. These are not like uh, 
uh, extensive list. So it's just a sampling out of it. And then uh, technology stack four, which is about basically the visualization part of it, dashboards, creating dashboards and all. And then tech five, you know this machine learning part, which is very, very important, but this is the fifth technology stack which is required. Okay. Now let us see which role. So these are the different role, uh, technical sets, right? Technology skill sets which are there versus what is the data cycle and then let's talk about what are the skill sets that are required at which level. This would give you a good idea. So um, uh, I was, as I was uh, discussing with Dutchman and uh, it's a point for everybody also. See guys, when you go back to your organization, right? At that point of time, you might not be doing all of the data life cycle, right? So when you talk about data life cycle, it's all about you know collection, storing, some uh, ETL performing ETL kind of logic, uh, doing some predictive modeling uh, kind of uh, you know, stuff on that data, and then uh, doing some sort of machine learning or creating some further information and the data which can be fed back again into the same cycle. So there are systems, what do they do is, they take the data, they analyze it, they do whatever they want to do, they create the information out of it, and then the created information again becomes the input. Okay, so these are the latest trends which are coming now in market. So all of these are the different roles. Now some of you might be doing, uh, let's say, only the data ETL part. Some of you might be doing only the machine learning part. But does it mean that you are a data scientist? It means you are the part of a data science team, but when it comes to a data scientist, basically he or she is supposed to take part in each and every of these things. Then only you can call yourself as, you know, as a proper data scientist. So when you talk about a collection, data collection part of it, basically, you know, technology stack one, which was basically about the storm, flume, scribe, etc., they would come. When it comes to the storage part of it, Hadoop, no doubt about it. By the way, Hadoop is storage plus computation grid. That's the unique thing and that is what makes it so powerful. So it's the storage plus uh, computation grid. Many of the other frameworks are either storage grid or the computation grid. Talk about the storm, it's a computation grid. It's not a storage grid. It has to rely on something. Okay? Talk about it with it's a it's a, again a kind of computation grid, but it again relies on Hadoop. So some of the things, but when it comes to Hadoop, it's a storage grid as well as computation grid. That's why in the next part, which is about the complexification and transformation about the data and all, you will see Hadoop as well as uh, technologies like R, Pig, Python, etc., etc. You know, coming into the place. Once you do this, the next logical stage is about modeling and other stuff. So again, you can see Hadoop's, uh, you know, uh, footprint up to this part itself. So let me tell, uh, so why Hadoop is there in the modeling part and reasoning and all that stuff. The simple thing is, uh, as you will see in some time, that uh, the algorithms which we, we would be implementing using R and on a large, larger data set using Mahout, they actually use MapReduce. In case of Mahout, it uses MapReduce. So essentially it means you are using the power of Hadoop. So Hadoop has such a large footprint. I hope this would be giving you the idea also why it is becoming so popular, right? So, and uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, that uh, basically other traditional tools like R, Pig, uh, Python, etc. also come into place. And then, the last part, not the least, which is about you know predictions and recommendations and all. This is where most of the technologies come into place. So it's a combination of R, you know, Mahout, and visualization uh, part of it. So uh, web apps, dashboards, etc., and uh, machine learning libraries like uh, when it comes to you know uh, Mahout and uh, uh, those, those kind of things. So, uh, when it comes to Mahout or Veka, etc. So, Mahout or Veka are the most, uh, uh, I would say, popular kind of uh, machine learning frameworks which are there. Yes.